and just I think being on the road I meet so many people on their grief journey and we, we talk about it and I think it's just very therapeutic because some mothers just don't want to open up but I, I think by talking about I mean, our ch children might be gone but they're not forgotten Hello, hello. Welcome to Glow Out and About. I so wanted to get up early this morning and show you the sunset out in the Nevada desert, but I was just so comfy in my van that I just couldn't rouse myself. But I think you'll forgive me when you see the wonderful tour I have to bring to you today. Amazing cargo trailer that has been designed by a woman that you are going to be impressed by. So come on, let's go and I'll show you what I mean. Well, hello, Jersey, and welcome to Glorious Life on Wheels. Now that's kind of an interesting name. How did you get that nickname? Oh, hi, Carol. Um, all my friends out here in Colorado just call me Jersey. And it's because I'm from Jersey. I grew up in Jersey. Oh, okay. And that's what they call me and told me I have a Jersey accent, which I don't believe, but it just stuck. And so I'm now Jersey and her nomad. It's me and my, my three pets that travel around. So who are you traveling with? Elliot, my rat terrier. He'll be 14 in August. And Violet here, she just turned 12 on Valentine's Day. And she's a little chihuahua. And my Siamese cat, Gideon, he's Where's sleeping he? over here. Oh, okay. So he's resting and taking a little cat nap. Excuse the pun. But so now I see that you have this beautiful trailer now what is it called is there this is called a carmate um, cargo trailer it's a 2019 seamless exterior it's six by 12. and do you find that's enough room for you and your companion to oh, travel there's so companions? many times i wake up in the morning i look towards the kitchen and i think wow this place is really big and this is all i need wow so now you told me you've been on the road quite a while do you want to tell my viewers how long you've been on the road yeah almost six years now I raised seven kids and they all went off to college on me the last three and I decided to just go on the road. Now, this isn't your first rig. No. So what other rigs did you have? I left with um, a 98 F-150 that I built to back out and I camped in that for a little bit and went back east. And then I had a pop-up for a little bit and sold that and I bought a vintage trailer. And I went up to Wyoming for a while and was a work camper there. And then that got some snow damage when I was out in Uray, Colorado. So I sold that. She's now an Airbnb somewhere, which I oh think is goodness. lovely because I was absolutely in love with her. She was a 74 Roadrunner. And then I bought another pop-up and went to meet my granddaughter last uh, summer, my new granddaughter, my 13th one, in Virginia. So I finished doing the pop-up, you know, remodeling inside, and I sold that, and I bought this. I always wanted another cargo trailer. The first one, all I did was move across country with. I didn't have the opportunity to build it out. So I saw this one on Facebook Marketplace. And I offered her a price, and she said, sure. I went to North Carolina to pick it up and went back to my son's Virginia, and we started our build. Now, you have, I see you have, well, why don't we look and see what you used for your kitchen, for your water system, refrigeration. Now, this water system, oh, what a cute little pail or pan. Where did you it's get that? It's just a galvanized bucket from home, um, Tractor Supply. Okay. And the water jug is just like your your iced tea container you use like at picnics. Now you were telling me you're planning on at some point making a little change in this system? Yeah, I just saw that the tractor supply had a bigger sink or a bigger bucket. So mm -hmm. I'm going to eventually get a wider countertop here and sink the sink into it and then um, use probably a foot pump um, water spigot. Okay. And, and now... then have gray, gray water tank underneath. Okay. Now I see you have a... Is this a 12 volt? It's a 12 volt Alpi Cool. And how do you like that? I love it, except it opens this way. 
So it opens from front to back? Yeah. No, side to side. Okay. And you would rather front to back? Yeah, because when I have to open it, I have to pull it out. Okay. And I'd rather it open this way. Okay. But I am going to put this up on a shelf and have the countertop over top of it so mm -hmm. I can still use the counter and then build the shelf for my Jackery battery underneath it. Okay. Well, since you've brought up the Jackery, what kind of Jackery do you have and what kind of power supply do you have? I have the Jackery 1000. And do you find that that's enough for your needs? Yeah, because basically all I just run on it is my refrigerator and once in a while my tablet or my cell phone to okay. recharge at night. And then as far as lights, I see that you have, oh, these are really cute. So you have little fairy lights? Fairy lights and little little white, you know, little ball ones. I got it, big lots. And then you were telling me that your other lights I see on your ceiling, which we'll come back to in a minute, but you have um, that, it's just that, just a stick on light? No, these, con these came with a trailer. Oh, okay. And they only work right now if I'm hooked up to my truck. Okay. And they came with a switch on the wall over here. Okay. And my ceiling fan will work when I'm hooked up to my truck. I don't have a house battery yet. Okay, so you have a, that's a... Dometic. A Dometic fan? Yeah. Okay. And then you also, I see, you were telling me that under your cabinets you have puck lights? Yeah, I have four puck lights that work with a, um, a little remote and on a timer. And I can, you know, there's three different settings. And then over here... You have a Berkey. How do you like your Berkey? I love my Berkey. That was another purchase that I knew I had to have. You know, water's different in every state, sometimes every every town. So mm -hmm. this gets 99.9% .9 of pathogens, bacteria, you name it. It filters it out with the carbon filters in it. And I think the water tastes great. Now, how about your stove here? You've got a butane stove? Yep, I went with that because it's the butane canisters are so much lighter than a big propane tank. Okay. And I have to be careful with how much I tow with the Hummer that I use to tow it with. Now, do you want to talk and tell us about your bed here? I see there has a, there's a little lump in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's Violet. <laughs> Violet's the little oh, yeah. lump that everyone sees is it's Violet. It's cold. <laughs> um, it's just a plywood two by four type frame um, with a four inch um, mattress. So it's forge foam. So it's wide enough across for you to sleep in comfortably. Yeah, it's just bigger than a twin. Okay, all right. And you know, everyone will be commenting if I do not ask you two things. How do you go to the bathroom and how do you shower? Um, I have a portable camp shower. Okay, let's see. I don't, I couldn't find the name of it. Um, it comes with this carrying case and this collapsible bucket. But you were telling me that you don't use that collapsible bucket. No, I use a, a bigger container. Because that collapsible bucket collapsed on you and got water it, everywhere. It collapsed on me. Um, maybe I didn't have it full enough, Okay. but it flooded my house. Oh, no. And this comes with, it's a USB battery. You just okay. stick this pump in your water source. Now, you were telling me that there are two different heads, but you prefer yep. one of them over the other. Here's the shower head. Okay. And they just screw on. And it comes with a sink um, sprayer. And that's the one you use to shower This is with? the one I use because it uses less water. Okay. And about how much water to do your hair and I shower? Can, about a gallon, maybe sometimes just a little bit more. Okay. And okay. after I wash my hair, um, then I'll stand in the tub and so you, squat down and rinse off. So you stand in there to shower when you're showering? Yep. Yeah, you know, I don't stand up to because then I get water everywhere. Okay. So you just, just kind of, you know, wash off with a little sprayer and I squat down a little bit. And you do have an outdoor shower, but you haven't used it yeah, yet. Yeah, I haven't it's, used it yet. You know, an outdoor shower tent. Now, oh, no, I don't have a tent. I just have, well, this this can go outside. It has a hook on it. I just oh, have okay. it showered outside. I have a tarp to go up over my back doors. Oh, okay. To make a little shower room. All right. And then as far as using the bathroom, what do you use? I have, oops, sorry, Elliot. I have a porta potty here. Okay. Oh, okay. Just like a cassette toilet. Yeah, just a cassette toilet, and that's where my cat box is too, right next to it. Okay. Oh, okay. So you have them yeah. together, and yeah. then and I have clothes here too. So what do you do as far as how do you empty that? If I'm someplace where there's a dump site, like an RV park, or like Quartzite had, you know, the ones you can pull into and pay, mm -hmm. um, then I'll just go there and dump it. Or if I'm on the road and it needs to be dumped, then I just put it in a, like a reusable shopping bag and I go in and take a shower at Love's gas station or something and just use the toilet. Okay, or even when you get gas, you can just yeah. It. Okay, and you know, like here, boondocking, I you know, do what a lot of other people do—just use 
plastic bags and cat litter and then okay. just throw it away. Okay. Just don't overthink it. That's true. Yep. There's kind of a sensitive topic that I'm going to approach, and you gave me permission to do this. You have seven children, but you lost your oldest one to an accident. And you were telling me that you thought being on the road actually was a form of kind of therapy for your grief. Do you want to explain that? Sure. Um, I lost my son almost 14 years ago. He was 30. Him and his pregnant wife were killed in a car crash. He hit someone head on. Um, when I first went down to court site and met a bunch of women, and within five minutes, three other women had opened up to me. They had lost a child. And just, I think, being on the road, I meet so many people on their grief journey. And we, we talk about it. And I think it's just very therapeutic. Because some mothers just don't want to open up. But I, I think by talking about I mean, our ch children might be gone, but they're not forgotten. Absolutely. And do you think that you have been able to help other people who I are going so. through this journey? I, I do hope so. And you were sharing that you, one of the things that you have done to sustain yourself on the road, in addition to your crafting, and we'll talk about that a little later, but you have been a caregiver and you've also been someone who helps people pass over to the other side. Do you want to explain that? Sure. I was, um, a friend of mine had a brainstem stroke and she needed someone to, to go there and help her out while her husband went to work. So she asked me and I more than welcomed, you know, the opportunity to go help her. And while I was there, um, I got a job alongside hospice doing end of life care for some people out in Colorado Springs. And you were sharing how you were able to help create a calm setting and environment that would just bring peace sometimes to people who are very agitated and fearful. Yeah. Sometimes a family just doesn't realize that just, just be calm. They, you know, they're, I don't know how to say it. They have a journey to do and that's where all their energy is going. And when the environment's not calm and peaceful, it, it's, I think they struggle. Okay. So you have done a lot of things on the road. You said you did work camp mm -hmm. and you did other jobs. And then you have this job, um, uh, a little business that you said that you do. It's a lot of it's seasonal, but let's, let's look at some of the products that you make. I accidentally erased our talk about Jersey's seasonal business. She makes the most beautiful gnome-like characters called Swedish Tom Tays that are used for wine bottle and candle toppers. You can see some examples of them in this picture. She also makes other amazing crafts that she sells at craft fairs and festivals. According to Swedish folklore, these Tom Tays bring prosperity to your homestead, but they can also be very naughty playing pranks. <laughs> Now, you've been on the road six years and have been traveling by yourself. Have you, in the last year or so, made some different um, decisions about where you go and how you go there? Yeah, I have. Um, I came across a few of Bob Wells' videos on YouTube, and he mentioned Quartzsite a lot. So something drew me there, and I went there for, was it the RTR that they had in January and February? And I met so many women there, they're going to be lifelong friends. And we decided to, um, I met up with another one in Lake Havasu, and we camped there for three weeks. And now I met people here, we're probably going to Moab uh, when I leave here. So you can meet your tribe, so as to speak. Basically, yeah, I guess that's what you call it. Now, how did you, you were telling me that you met them through an online Facebook? Um, camp together. Okay. A Facebook group that I think it's associated with Homes on Wheels Alliance, the Howard group. And so you met a lot of people. And so your plans, basically, you were telling me, are kind of open. You meet people, and if you form a connection, sometimes you just go where they're going. Yeah, exactly. And cool. sometimes you just like to be in a group, and even you don't have to camp together. Like, I'm over here, and there's a bunch of people across the street. And, you know, I have a dog, so I like my privacy a little bit better with them. But it's just fun to have people to sit around a campfire at night or go over and have coffee with them or even go exploring the area. Well, Jersey, thank you so very much for sharing your story with us and, and opening up about something that was very personal and, and very painful, but sharing it to help other people. Now, you have a YouTube channel that you have been launching and getting going. Do you want to tell us about that? It's called Jersey and Her Nomads, which my nomads are my pets. Um, I'm still working on my first video, so be patient. 
Okay. And I also have an Instagram page, which is where I paste, uh, post all of my, my journey. Okay. And that is uh, feedmyvegan underscore RVer. Okay. So, but your YouTube channel again? Jersey and her nomads. Okay, so look out for Jersey and her nomads, and you don't know where they'll be, but I'm sure it'll be somewhere fun and somewhere worth checking out. Thanks again, Jersey, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you.